Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Also, still Merry Christmas. It's still Christmas until January the 6th. We want to welcome you to worship at Covenant Community Church. We are a United Church of Christ congregation that proudly proclaims no matter who you are or where you're on life's journey, you're always welcome here. Thank you for joining us by social media uh, this Sunday as we are observing the Epiphany. Let us pause for a word of prayer. Loving God, we gather by social media today and we welcome your holy presence in all that we do. Help us to have a New Year epiphany amid the transitions we face right now and will face in this new year. For we pray it in Christ's name. Amen and amen. To all of you who will hear this, I want to share a special message that was at the close of my 2021 daily meditations from the Center for Action and Contemplation. It's called Breathe With Us. Please receive it as a message from Covenant as we begin 2022. It says, in a world of fault lines and fractures, we stand in a place where opposites come together, awaiting the birth of what is to come. If you're doubting, welcome. If you're healing, welcome. If you're angry at injustice, welcome. We await a new genesis, one more beginning in a series of starts, trailing back to the time, to the end time, to the first day. If you're afraid, welcome. If you're joyful, welcome. If you're longing to belong, welcome. God's generous rhythm of life, death, resurrection, moving in and through all things, the very breath and source of the cosmos is itself. Our pathways converge and continue. Each one of us a catalyst for love's action. We, a community of faith, a community of saints, conspire, come, breathe with us. May it be so for all who join covenant on this journey this year. Amen? We want you to know that we are returning to our usual virtual lineup of activities this week. We invite you to join us for life lessons that will start back on this Wednesday, uh, January the 5th at 7 p.m., where we will continue our series on the secrets to great relationships. This week, Pete and I are going to be teaching part seven, Love is Forgiving. And we invite you to join us. Also, uh, join us for Lighthouse, the adult Bible study uh, class uh, next Sunday morning by Zoom, uh, January 9th at 10.30 a.m. You can find out how to uh, connect with both of those by Zoom or live stream on our uh, website, covenantbirmingham.org. Uh, if you're watching by live stream, uh, please give us a shout out so we'll know who you are. If you're watching by Zoom, please make uh, uh, us know who you are as well. During the prayer time today, please feel free to put any praise reports or prayer requests in the chat section of Zoom or in the comment section of Facebook live stream, and we will add them to the prayer and praise report. We are now emailing the bulletin uh, by email blast this, uh, each week. Uh, and so uh, look for it in your email. If you didn't receive it, look in your junk mail. It may be there. But if you still didn't receive it, then that means we don't have your email. And so if you want to get the bulletin each week uh, by email, then please uh, send, email the church your uh, email, and Jennifer will be glad to add you to the list. Birthdays this week. Uh, we, uh, the, our reader today's birthday, he happened to be one of the very few people in here. Uh, and so birthdays today, Tim Key's birthday is today. He's about... 83, 84, I'm not really sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, Betty Barker's birthday is on the 3rd. Teresa Hyatt's uh, birthday is on the 5th. Greg Adams' birthday is the 6th. Zakaria Grayson's birthday is the 6th. And Elisa Macon's birthday is the 6th. And so let's wish them happy birthday wherever you are. You can happy birthday, all of you. Um, I opened him this morning. 
was, a Christmas, it was written as a Christmas carol by the Reverend John Henry Hopkins Jr. in 1857 while he was serving as the rector of Christ Episcopal Church in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Over the years, it has become one of the premier epiphany hymns that some call the quest of the Magi. And so let's continue our worship as we sing together, we three, as we sing where you are, <laughs> we three kings of Orient are. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light glorious now behold him arise king and god at sacrifice alleluia alleluia earth to heaven replies oh star of wonder star of night Star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect line. We pause now to lift up the prayers of our people. And um, as I said earlier, if you have a prayer request, a praise report, please put it in the chat uh, section or the comment section, and we will pick it up and add it to the prayer list. We, first of all, want to lift up the praises that we have received. And this week we have three. Uh, Ronnie Odom starts a new job on tomorrow and is planning to move back to Birmingham uh, shortly. Uh, my wonderful neighbor, Mrs. Bates, is home from rehab, and we want to give God praise for all the safe traveling for all those who travel and came home safely this week, uh, during the holidays. And also, our prayer request uh, from our list that we have received, uh, Tammy and Jennifer were both very ill with the crud, uh, so we want to lift them up. Uh, one of our members, Carlos Hill, is very sick from covid Vivian is having her MRI this week. Uh, Jonathan Quinn, we lift up, who is uh, facing new and additional health challenges. We continue to lift up Gina, I mean Julie Burke and Gina as Julie continues to struggle with her health issues. Jamie's friend, uh, Linda, with respiratory failure and Legionella. Uh, Michael and Anna's friend, Jean. Uh, Lita Alexander Cooper's mother is on hospice. Anne Moya is on hospice. My cousin, Sonia Beatty, uh, who's facing can cancer, is currently receiving blood transfus transfusion, chemo, and radiation. Tamara, who's having health challenges and has an upcoming endocrinologist appointment this month. Jim Ball's neighbors uh, with life challenges, Andrew and Tiffany with three small children. Bobby Causey, who has uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, she has a PET scan on the 4th and starts treatment on the 11th. Uh, my sister Lula with her ulcers and aneurysms in the intestines. My sister Frances received, who is recovering from her mastectomy on the 13th of December, but also we found out the cancer has made it to her lymph nodes. Uh, little Larry, my brother's namesake that was born three days before my birthday, and his mother Crystal are both sick with the crud. Uh, sick with stuff, uh, yeah, the uh, traveling mercies for all those who uh, will be uh, still traveling. And there were several unspoken requests that didn't want their name. And again, if you have one, please list it. Let us pause for prayer.
God, on this first Sunday of a new year, we pause to give you praise and thanksgiving. For you are the breath of life that lives in us. You sustained us through 2021. And we are so grateful to be alive in 2022. Isaiah said, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And God, we certainly feel that way. We feel it so as we rejoice and praise you for the answered prayers and the praise reports, shared and unspoken. But God, Isaiah goes on to say, For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. And so many of our brothers and sisters are facing such darkness in various ways in their lives. And so God, in your mercy, we ask that you would hear our prayer requests. Restore us according to your mercy and grace, your compassion and care. Especially on those who we've lifted up to you by name and unspoken prayer requests. And for Isaiah goes on to say, God, but our God will arise upon you and God's glory will appear over you. And so we ask you to let your face shine on all of us that are in need with renewal of physical healing, emotional well-being, financial viability, and spiritual wholeness. We ask these things based on your word. As the psalmist sings, for you deliver the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no help. You have pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of those in need. And so on this Epiphany Sunday, the first Sunday of 2022, we simply ask, Lord, listen to your children praying. Send your spirit wherever they are. Listen to your children pray and send us love, send us power, and send us grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Oh, Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Good morning. I'm Michael Bowen. I'm clerk of the board here at Covenant. I'm also honored to serve as treasurer on the board of the Southeastern Conference of the United Church of Christ. Like me, I'm sure many of you would rather be in church in person right now. The board's decision to temporarily stop in-person worship was not easy, but given the current situation with this pandemic, we all felt that stopping in-person worship for now is the safest and best action. Please know that UCC, our conference, and our church, Covenant, are doing our best to give due diligence to the health and safety of our congregation. Hopefully, we can return to in-person worship sooner rather than later. Pastor JR's sermon today is called A New, the New Year's Epiphany Amid Transition. We certainly hope and pray this transition to no in-person worship is a very brief one. In the meantime, please join me in continuing to support Covenant financially during this transition. If you already do so, thank you. If not, please prayerfully consider doing so. Our website and Facebook page lists all the secure ways you can give, so please give generously. Would you join me in prayer? Loving God, we thank you for your hope, peace, love, and joy born into our world as the Christ child. Help us at Covenant to be an avenue to our community where your grace can help them survive and thrive during pandemics and times of transition. Bless our financial gifts that Covenant might help our community to have an epiphany of your unconditional love, forgiveness, mercy, 
acceptance, and grace. Bless each giver as well as those unable to give currently. And bless our church throughout this year of 2022. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Special music. The gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his start its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judah, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For where you shall come a ruler who is a shepherd, my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Tim, for reading the scripture this morning. Once again, I want to say Happy New Year on this first Sunday of 2020. Uh, coming up this week is the day of Epiphany on Thursday, January the 6th. But we here at Covenant are observing it today as Epiphany Sunday. The Epiphany is a Christian observance or festival held on January the 6th in honor of the Magi visiting Jesus and bestowing on him some expensive gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You already know what gold is. Gold is gold. The frankincense is a, a ro aromatic resin that's used in incense and, and in uh, perfumes. Myrrh is also a gum-like resin that's used in incense and perfumes, but it also has a history of being used for medicine. And these three gifts by the Magi to Jesus is the impetus for today's gift giving at Christmas time. Might surprise some of you to know that most of the world still exchange gifts on January 6th, not December the 25th because that's when the Magi supposedly arrived with their gifts. All that to say that it's still Christmas, and if you haven't gotten my, my gift, it's still time before Thursday. Just kidding. While we observe the epiphany to, uh, today and this week, I want today to talk about an epiphany. And so for a few moments, let's talk about or think about a New Year's epiphany amid transition. Let us pray. God, we thank you for having brought us through 2021 and all the transitions that we have faced during that time. We thank you for being alive in 2022. And we anticipate, God, you have a reason for us to be alive. Open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts to receive instruction as to what you have kept us here for. That our lives may be enriched and other lives may be blessed. And your great name may be glorified. May it be so. For we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I don't know what the song was you played, but it was so beautiful. Thank you this morning. A New Year's epiphany amid transition. Let's take a moment and say a little bit more about the Magi and their gifts. Today was, opening him was an epiphany hymn, well-known epiphany hymn, We Three Kings. But scripture doesn't tell us how many there were. The assumption is made that there were three simply because there were three gifts named. However, there could have been only two, and they had three gifts. It could have been a lot more than three, but it was still only three gifts. And we need to also realize that the gifts were given in honor of what they knew to be a royal birth. is the king of the Jew, the one who had been born the king of the Jews. These gifts, these gifts were probably given in substantial amounts because we know they were probably the economic source that sustained Mary and Joseph and Jesus while they lived as immigrants for 10 years or so in a foreign land, Egypt had died. 
toddler when those gifts came and not an infant in a manger. Anywhere, as we best can tell, from a year and a half to two years after the birth of Jesus, not 12 days as most of us think. In scripture read today, Jesus was not a baby in a manger in a barn. House. What Timothy read, uh, Tim read was on entering the house, they saw the child with his mother, with Mary's mother, and they knelt down and paid homage. Then opening their chest, they offered him gold, gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirror. And so while the epiphany is a Christian observance of festival, about 2,000 years ago, a visit with Jesus 2,000 years ago, what we need today is an epiphany for 2022. That means that we need to have a moment in which we suddenly see and understand things in a new and very clear way. And as we begin this new year of 2022, we all need an epiphany to deal with and manage all the transitions that are going on around us and even in our lives. After all, it seems that everything these days seems to be in transition, doesn't it? My recent trip home reminded me how in my own life in 2021, I had an example of this. I didn't go home for Christmas 2020 because of the pandemic and because of the uh, pre-vaccine uh, non-availability. One, I began with me making a trip home anyway because of a transition. trucking accident on December the 28th, 2020. Epiphany day of 2021. I came back to my hotel room from his funeral to discover another transition going on in our country. Installation of a new president was about to happen, but there was an insurrection U.S. Capitol that very day. None of us had heard anything about it because we'd been away at the funeral. The document, all the transitions I've been a part of this past year. I will note that for Covenant, there's been some transitions. We started the year only meeting by Zoom and live stream social media. In June, we began to transition slowly back to in-person worship and while continuing to worship by social media. And then in late December, our immunocompromised members, we once again transitioned to no in-person worship, which I certainly pray and hope is a very, very, very short-lived thing. I miss y'all. <laughs> I was getting used to you again. It's Christmas. Expecting it to be a better holiday than last year. And I arrived at Christmas time on Christmas Day. It was wonderful. My first stop was to see Ariella, you know, the peach of my heart, and her new little brother, little Larry, uh, my late brother's namesake, was, who was born three days before my birthday. And it was wonderful to see them. And then on to see Lulu and Lulu again. And on Sunday morning, I was uh, planning on getting up and going uh, to church, hopefully, but then another transition hit. And fine on Christmas Day, life of the party, like she always is, was rushed to the hospital that morning, early that morning, two blocks from the hotel that I was staying in. Pain. Through that, uh, with her through that emergency room ordeal, uh, she has a bath also that's very treatable, but they found aneurysms in her intestines that is of great concern to them and to us. On Monday, I learned that the pathology on my sister Frances, who had had the mastectomy on December the 16th, came back and said there's cancer in her lymph nodes. So y'all keep Lulu and Frances in prayer. 
hopeless with you because these transitions that are happening with my family is nothing if they're happening in lots of family. I pray that they're not as extreme as they seem to be in ours right now. But this is a season, we're in a season of experiencing transitions where we all just long to simply return to what we used to call normal. It's teaching us there is no such thing as normal anymore. Seems to be a constant state of transition. The reality is that we were in transition even before COVID. To have accelerated transitions and our awareness of them to the point of mind blowing suddenness. And more than ever before, we need a word from God. We need a word of hope. We need something we can hold on to that is unchanging in a world that's constantly changing. amid our transitions. We need an epiphany to help us understand and see clearly how to deal with our world in this seemingly nonstop transition. And in the text that Tim wrote, uh, read this morning, the sacred text from Matthew 12, or 2 rather, that's assigned for today on this epiphany, son, the world was faced with a chaotic transition in that time. Where this wonderful grace in the person of Jesus had been born into this world. And the empire represented by King Herod wanted that grace stamped out. Wanted that grace killed. Wanted it eradicated from the face of the earth. Every time God's grace breaks through, there is someone that wants to stamp it out. Breaks through in your life. There are forces that want to stamp it out. And we need a New Year's epiphany to anchor us amid these transitions. God had said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I, for I know the plans I have for you, declares our God, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God had a plan for that grace that was born into our world, Jesus, not to just survive, but to thrive. And the text today, in the text today, the Magi had an epiphany that God used to keep that grace alive in our world 2,000 years ago when evil forces of empire wanted to destroy it in its infancy. There are forces wanting to destroy the grace of God in your life in this new year. This Sunday, the first Sunday of 2022, I have good news for you. To have an epi a New Year's epiphany amid the transitions you face right now in your life and that you're going to face in 2022. That New Year's epiphany said that God's grace will not only help you survive, but if we allow it, if we follow it, if we be led by it, we will thrive in the face of transition. That New Year's epiphany starts with us understanding clearly who is the source behind that grace born into our world as Jesus. This week, this past week rather, one of my, in one of my meditations from Richard Rohr, he said about the one who is behind this grace born into our world that God is not a distant, terrifying monster waiting for vengeance at the end of the universe. No, God descended among us here and now, making the tree of true aliveness available to all. You know what that means? That means is that God's grace that we know as the Holy Spirit very much alive in 2022. It's here to give us comfort 
It's here to give us help and solace. It's here to give us strength to endure, and not just endure, but to thrive this year. Regardless of any transition that life throws at us, if we will hold to God's unchanging hand. You know, the Old Testament text not read today, but it was the sign for the day was from Isaiah 60. And it's a prophecy that came to pass in the text that Tim read this morning. It's wisdom for the New Year epiphany that we need in 2022 for the transitions we will face this year. Isaiah says in chapter 6, and let me paraphrase it so you can get the fullness of it. He says, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of our God has risen upon you. For the darkness of transition covers the earth, and thick darkness of transition may come upon you, but our God will arise upon you, and God's glory will appear over you. And then Isaiah says, lift up your eyes. Look around. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because of the abundance of God that shall be brought to you and the provision of God that shall come to you. I want you to know this morning, get a New Year's epiphany of God's grace. It will sustain you and it will allow you to thrive no matter what's thrown at you this year. We have faced some bad stuff this past couple years, haven't we? And there's some stuff in front of us too. But God has kept us here for a reason. And God didn't keep us here to beat you up or knock you down. God kept you here to thrive. To thrive with God's grace. So I'm asking you to hold on to these words. Let them be a New Year's epiphany amid the transitions you will face in this year. I invite you to receive that New Year's epiphany in its fullness by simply saying yes or yes again to walking in a relationship with God. Renew your relationship with God for 2022. And as Doris Akers wrote of her epiphany, simply take those words and use them for yours. And say, lead me, guide me along the way. you have something available to use as communion and uh, remember even while 
we will be worshiping uh, virtually. We will still be doing communion each Sunday. But before we do that, every year, on the first Sunday of the year, it has been my practice to do an anointing, to offer a, at a blessing, an anointing and blessing. And I'm going to ask you today, wherever you are, uh, I'm going to anoint myself. And I want you to just put your hands across your chest like this as you are receiving the anointing that we give. And I anoint you, each of you virtually, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit that you will have a New Year's epiphany of God's grace that sustains you and causes you to survive in 2022. Anointing for all men. today. Some of you need an anointing, and I know that the Holy Spirit was there for you. I could feel it right here. Praise the Lord. Amen. And amen. On this first Sunday of the new year, this table that has been a representative of God's grace for access for everyone has been so abused by people limiting who could come to it. That's why at Covenant, we don't put no fence around the table of grace. All are welcome. All you have to do is choose to come. You can participate right where you are because God's grace doesn't know time and space. It reaches all over. And so this morning, I simply say to you, the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. This table represents the fact that God's grace was born into this world in Jesus. And it could not be stamped out. It cannot be eradicated. And because of it, we can receive God's New Year epiphany to survive and thrive in the face of whatever transition comes our way. It's an epiphany that helps us survive and thrive as God desires for us. And we do that by confessing those places in our lives that we've missed the mark, things we've said, we've done, that have caused us to feel separated from God and others and even our best selves. And so we pause right now for a moment of confession. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let me say to you, receive and accept 
the New Year's epiphany that God has for you at the beginning of this New Year's. By knowing that without a doubt, God has heard your confession. And beloved, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we pray that you will use these simple elements, the grain of the field and the fruit of the vine, as agents of hope, peace, joy, and love to be born into our hearts and lives as a New Year's epiphany for our lives in 2022. And so, God, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, consecrating them to be so. In Christ's name, amen. Whatever you may have, realize that this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Let us eat. The life of Christ, the cup of salvation that brings us hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. Let us drink. Let us pray. God, for providing all that we need and for all that you have done for us, we say thanks. And for all that you ask of us in 2022, we simply say yes in Christ's name. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you for joining us for worship on this first Sunday of the year. We hope to see you in person real soon again. Again, I want to say on behalf of the board and the staff at Covenant, Happy New Year. And until then, until we see one another, let the title and the words of this great hymn, one of my favorites, be your New Year's epiphany to face transition. Hold to God's unchanging hand. you. Keep safe, and we'll see you soon. Amen?